So good morning uh, everyone. Uh, so, we are um, we have looked at um, in the last chapter we have looked at the mechanical properties of solids. Uh, in this chapter we are going to talk about mechanical properties of fluids um, and I will just tell you that uh, what we mean by fluids. Um, there are essentially three states of matter uh, namely the solid, uh, liquid and the gases um, and the solids are characterized by um, having specific shapes and sizes. Okay. And uh, uh, if you apply pressure to it, the change in volume is negligible um, and uh, sometimes it is so small that it cannot be uh, recorded. While um, uh, the same is true for uh, liquids, but the liquids cannot take shear stress at all. So, it does not have any uh, specific shape or size and it takes the shape of the container that it is put into. And uh, when we come to gases, uh, they have a different property. Uh, in fact, uh, uh, the change in volume by application of pressure in gases uh, is enormous or uh, can be enormous. And, um, like when you uh, fill in uh, automobile tire uh, with air uh, and by using um, you know a device so as to fill in air, the air does not go and settle in uh, the bottom of the tire, rather it just fills the space available to it uniformly. Uh, while the liquid actually if you pour in liquid it will just uh, go to the bottom run to the bottom and start building up from there. Uh, the gases do not have that property and um, because the gases uh, and the liquids they do not have any specific shape uh, they can flow and that is why they are called as fluids. So, uh, when we talk about, uh, so we are discussing mechanical properties of fluids and in that so far we have uh, defined uh, solids, uh, liquids, and gases, it is these two collectively are called as fluids. So, it is the liquid and the gases uh, both uh, can flow and anything that can flow um, <coughs> is called as a fluid. Now, um, there is another uh, state of matter in addition to the three which happens at very large temperature when uh, the atoms are actually uh, stripped of their electrons and uh, they acquire a charge and uh, these are called as ions. So, atoms uh, either uh, I mean which are uh, devoid of some electrons um, essentially which are at the outermost shell um, and they form ions and this state of matter is called as plasma and some scientists are of the opinion that uh, uh, the colloids uh, which are uh, the suspension of uh, tiny particles in a liquid such as uh, milk uh, should also be considered as a separate state of matter, uh, but nevertheless we shall uh, talk about uh, primarily these three states of matter solids, liquids and gases. And as I have told that we have mostly dealt with solids in the last chapter. So, we shall be more uh, concerned about liquids and gases 
uh, or uh, collectively which are known as fluids um, now. So, uh, we have uh, fluids uh, all around us um, and uh, the air that we breathe in is a fluid. Uh, human body consists of uh, water which is also a fluid which mostly consists of water um, and uh, uh, a lot of uh, uh, processes that go on in human bodies or in other living beings even in plants. Uh, they are mediated by uh, fluids um, such as water or some other uh, you know liquid. So, uh, it is very important that we understand the properties of the fluids and uh, the way actually to characterize them. So, let us just go into um, understanding uh, fluids uh, and also solids from an interatomic or an intermolecular perspective point of view. So, uh, solids as we know that have definite shape and size um, do not have uh, do not have definite shape and size and uh, the reason being that um, the intermolecular force of attraction in solids is very large. So, those attractions or the interactions that uh, keep the molecules stay together and thus the solids have a definite shape. Uh, the intermolecular force of attraction in liquids is uh, small, uh, but not negligible. Uh, however, the intermolecular forces or interatomic forces in gases are negligible. Uh, so, these are uh, the uh, sort of from the microscopic point of view. Uh, we can uh, distinguish the solids, liquids and gases in this particular manner. Um, but what is important for us in this chapter is to understand some of the properties which uh, distinguish them uh, mechanically. That is some of the mechanical properties which are of relevance to us such as um, density and specific gravity. So, if I ask this question whether uh, a block of wood is heavier or a block of uh, iron, uh, you definitely say that a block of iron is heavier, but that is not true. A uh, large log of wood is definitely uh, heavier than a uh, nail or a small uh, block of iron. So, what property distinguishes uh, these two uh, wood and iron? So, let us talk about density to begin with. So, the word density mean um, let us denote it by a symbol rho which is equal to uh, mass divided by the volume. So, uh, m is equal to mass of the of the substance. and V is the volume. So, uh, so it is density is the property of the substance. So, whether big or small when a particle or a, when a particular substance is made of uh, certain material no matter what shape or size it takes it will have the same density. So, and uh, 
the SI unit of density is kg per meter cube and of course, the it also uh, sometimes it is the CGS units uh, unit is used of density is gram per centimeter cube or simply it is written as uh, gram per cc. Um, in general, uh, pressure uh, and temperature will affect uh, the value of the density for a given substance. So, while quoting the density, it is customary to talk about or to mention about the temperature and pressure at which it is calculated. So, I will give you some examples of uh, the densities of certain substances and you would know that uh, that what are the ranges of densities uh, of solids, liquids and gases. So, let us just give you some examples. So, <clears throat> so we have solids liquids and gases um, and let us write the material and rho. So, this uh, symbol is called as rho. So, this is in uh, kg per meter cube. Uh, again, we have uh, material and rho in kg per meter cube and All right. So, we have iron having a density 7.8 into 10 cube, we have an aluminum which has a density of 2.7 into 10 cube kg per meter cube, uh, wood uh, usually it is taken as a pine wood. Uh, it has a density about 0.5 into 10 cube and a glass it is 2.5 into 10 cube. Now, coming to the liquids it is water uh, and it is very important to say that at 4 degree centigrade or 277 Kelvin, the value is 1 into 10 cube um, and sea water is 1.025 and into 10 to the power 3. Uh, sea water is uh, known to be um, more dense uh, than ordinary water uh, <coughs> and then you have mercury which is 13.6 into 10 cube and now we have ethyl alcohol is equal to 0 0.79 into 10 cube. So, these are for the liquids as you can see that they are uh, almost one order of magnitude less uh, than, um, than the solids 
uh, while uh, it is uh, almost of the same uh, uh, density as uh, the wood has uh, in fact, a lower density than that of uh, mercury uh, and even uh, glass has something, uh, glass has a density which is lesser than mercury. Now, let us go to the gases. Uh, this is air, uh, which as you know is a, a mixture of nitrogen, oxygen and other gases. Um, and this is 1.29. Uh, remember, there is no 10 to the power 3 here, it is simply 1.29 uh, kg per meter cube. Helium gas is uh, 0 0.179 uh, kg per meter cube and carbon dioxide has uh, 1.98 kg per meter cube. So, you see that uh, the gases have a density which are um, pretty less, very less in fact in com as compared to um, the, the solids and the liquids, uh, three orders of magnitude less. Uh, and this as we have discussed is due to the negligible uh, force of attraction between the atoms or the mole molecules that constitute these gases. Uh, just to uh, that these uh, all these values that are quoted, uh, they are quoted at uh, a temperature equal to 0 degree centigrade, which is 273 Kelvin uh, and uh, a pressure of 1 atmosphere. In fact, it is important uh, to uh, as I as, as we have talked earlier that uh, these uh, densities are actually functions of temperature and pressure. So, it is important to mention uh, the temperature and pressure at which they are, uh, they are calculated or they are, uh, the values are quoted. Except for water, the value is equal to 1 into 10 cube kg per meter cube or 1 gram per cc at 4 degree centigrade. So, let us now do a problem, a simple numerical problem. Uh, so, what is the what is the mass of a lead sphere of radius radius uh, 0 0.5 meter uh, given that the rho of lead is equal to 11,300 kg per meter cube. Uh, so, in order to calculate the mass, uh, we shall use the formula that uh, uh, mass is equal to uh, density into the volume. So, in order to find the volume, uh, it is a sphere. So, the volume of a sphere is given by 4 third pi r cube which is equal to 0.5 cube, which is equal to uh, 0.523 meter cube um, and a mass is equal to uh, the density of lead multiplied by this volume and that is equal to 11,300 kg per meter cube um, multiplied by 0.523 meter cube. And if you simplify this, it comes out as 5910 kg. So, this is the, um, the, the mass of a lead sphere, which has uh, a radius of 0.5 meter. You understand that if we replace lead by an iron sphere or an uh, aluminum sphere, uh, this mass is going to be different because this quantity, even if the radius remains the same, because the uh, density of iron or density of aluminum are different than that of lead. Now, um, 
we shall continue with more problems later. Let us now define the other quantity which is uh, called as the specific gravity. And <coughs> specific gravity is defined it is defined as the ratio of a substance divided by the density uh, a ratio of the density of the substance divided by the density of water at 4 degree centigrade. So, uh, it is a dimensionless quantity. So, this is a density of a substance divided by density of water at 4 degree centigrade. Now, the advantage of defining this let us write specific gravity with a S G. Uh, this is just the abbreviations used for that for them. Uh, since the density of water at 4 degree centigrade is equal to 1 kg per meter cube. So, this becomes this is equal to 1 kg per meter cube. So, the specific gravity of a substance is uh, just the density of the substance multiplied by 10 to the power minus 3 uh, in a kg per meter cube. However, it is numerically equal to uh, the density in the CGS units. Okay. So, this is equal to 10 to the power minus 3 into density uh, of the substance and I should write numerical value because this is dimensionless in um, and this is equal to simply equal to. Uh, so, so, if this quantity is quoted in CGS units, then we will not have this 10 to the power minus 3. So, this is how specific gravity is defined. So, let us uh, talk about an important concept uh, in the context of fluids uh, that is uh, liquids and gases that is the concept of pressure. As we know that uh, pressure uh, is uh, uh, defined as the force exerted per unit area. So, let us write it with a symbol P is equal to F by A, where F is the force um, or the load uh, that is given to a certain object and A is the area over which the force acts. Um, and the SI unit of pressure is is a uh, Newton per meter square or it also has a name as Pascal and uh, 1 Pascal is equal to 1 Newton per meter square. <coughs> so, let us just consider that a person uh, whose uh, weight is 60 kgs and uh, his weight say is equally distributed uh, by uh, his two legs and uh, um, each uh, foot um, has an area of uh, say 600 uh, centimeter square. So, the pressure that he would be giving on the ground. So, his uh, weight is equal to um, 60 into g uh, just for now let us take g to be 10 uh, meter per second square. So, this is equal to 600 Newton is the force that he is exerting and um, so this is equal to F and so the pressure is uh, F divided by his 2 feet which has say an area of uh, uh, 10 um, uh, say 600 centimeters square. 
So, this is equal to 600 Newton divided by 2 into uh, 600 uh, into 10 to the power minus 4. So, each feet uh, has an area of 600 centimeter square. So, there are uh, 2 feet um, um, <coughs> each foot has a uh, area of 600 centimeter square, two feet will have uh, 1200 centimeter square. So, this is uh, equal to meter square. So, 600 will cancel and this will be uh, 0.5 into 10 to the power minus 4 Newton per meter square. So, that is the pressure that he exerts due to his uh, own weight. So, now uh, let us look at an important uh, a point about pressure um, exerted by fluids. So, uh, fluids exert pressure on a body from all sides and so let us particularly talk about pressure due to static fluids. So, we have a container, uh, it is filled up to water till that level and there is a cube and this fluid exerts a force from all sides. And this force acts normally on the surface of the uh, of the material or the cube. And uh, what I mean by normally is that the forces act perpendicularly as it is shown here. Uh, had there been a non perpendicular component that is a component which is not normal to the surfaces, then there will be a, a component of the force which is parallel to the surface uh, such as say this surface. And if there is a component that is parallel to this surface uh, by Newton's third law, this uh, cube will in turn exert a force on the fluid equal and opposite to that. And because of that, the fluid will be set in motion, which is contrary to what we have assumed that the fluid is static. So, there cannot be any component of force which is acting um, at a given angle to the surface, it has to be always normal to the surface of the, uh, of the material. So, uh, this is uh, the basic notion of pressure uh, due to fluids. Let us now uh, compute uh, that how to calculate the pressure uh, due to a fluid um, for a given body. So, let us take again an open container as we have taken earlier. Let us take a, a level of water and let us take a uh, say just to be um, keeping our discussion simple. Let us take a cube and uh, let this height be h and uh, so we are this uh, cube is of uh, height h uh, the density of the liquid equals to rho so uh, the liquid exerts a pressure on the bottom surface of this cube which is uh, of magnitude. Um, so, F is equal to m g uh, and this is equal to h m is equal to uh, v rho and a g and we are talking about a column of uh, water of volume v. So, according to this question 
v is equal to the height times the area of cross section of these bottom section. So, this is of area A and so this is equal to H A rho G uh, since pressure is defined as force by area. So, the pressure is equal to F over A which is equal to H rho G. So, the pressure due to a fluid uh, at a height h below the level of the fluid is h rho g. So, which means that uh, greater the height of the object, the pressure will be more. So, p simply scales as h given that rho and g remain constant. But there is a small problem there, we are taking rho to be constant uh, which means the density of the liquid remains constant which is uh, pretty correct by and large correct in the context of uh, liquids. Uh, except for the case of uh, ocean water where uh, there is an enormous mass of water uh, if you consider it. Uh, uh, a point at a depth h which is significantly below the sea level, uh, then there could be a change in the uh, density of the of the water uh, with height, but uh, without getting into that problem, we can say that even for gases which are largely compressible, uh, there could be significant variation of density with uh, with the height or with the distance uh, from where it is being measured. So, we actually need a uh, more uh, direct calculation of pressure how it varies as a function of depth uh, in a fluid not necessarily in a liquid, but in a fluid. Uh, as soon as we talk about a liquid we can safely assume that the rho is constant. Um, however, uh, we need to know this relation. So, for doing that let us take this case. <coughs> we will draw this same uh, drawing as we have done accepting that. So, this is the open container uh, it is filled up to the water is filled or a liquid is filled up to this level and let us take a small disc like water or the liquid that we are considering and which is measured from the bottom which exists at a, uh, at a distance y from the bottom and the slab is of thickness b y. Okay. So, we are going to calculate the pressure due to static fluid. Uh, for that we are taking uh, a fluid or a liquid in an open container and we are measuring the distances from the bottom of the container. We have taken a, a certain mass of water uh, which is at a distance y from the bottom has a thickness d y and uh, the, uh, the liquid has density rho and we need to calculate the pressure. So, what are the forces acting on this? There is a force that is acting uh, upward or let us call it the pressure um, and multiplied by the area of cross section of this slab which is the force acting uh, which is due to the fluid and in the upward direction. There is also a force acting down which is uh, say a p plus a d p multiplied by a. So, we have taken pressure at, at a height or this is rather a distance uh, 
y as p and pressure at a height again which what I mean is distance is equal to p plus d p. Uh, so, this is uh, at height y plus d y again measured from the ground is p plus d p. So, the force uh, due to the fluid acting upward is p a on this bottom surface of this disc. The force that is acting downward is p plus d p into a, a denotes the area of the slab and of course, we also should consider the effect of gravity. So, the gravity this uh, there will be. <coughs> so, just between before we write the gravity. So, there is a, a, a P A um, So, this will be P plus D P A minus P A. So, this is downward and this is upward. So, this is the fluid pressure also due to the weight of. So, let us write it as due to gravity. let us write that as d f uh, and g which is equal to uh, uh, d m into g. So, this g subscript stands for gravity and this g stands for acceleration due to gravity. So, d m is the mass of this disc uh, of the liquid and this is equal to uh, rho g and the d v which is equal to a uh, rho g um, a d y. So, again this is acting downward. So, the net force is equal to uh, P plus D P A minus P A and a plus um, uh, or we can write it net force uh, upwards will be P A minus P plus D P A minus rho G A D Y. Now, at equilibrium this net force is going to vanish. So, then we can write that P A minus P plus D P A minus rho g a d y equal to 0. So, if we uh, cancel a from uh, all from both the sides that is uh, divide uh, both sides by a, I get a simple differential equation of the form d p d y equal to minus g. So, this solution of this differential equation, solution of this differential equation will give me the variation of pressure as a function of y. There is a negative sign which tells you that the pressure will be more if the height that is this distance from the bottom is less, which means that if you talk about the height from the uh, from the top surface, then pressure will actually 
become more as the height or the depth into the water uh, as I mean as it increases uh, the pressure will be more. Since the uh, distance is measured from the bottom surface we are getting a minus sign which is uh, uh, which makes sense because we need to have uh, the as the water column gets bigger and bigger it is going to exert more force uh, at, a, at a given point. So, this is my uh, defining equation which should give me the uh, variation of pressure as a function of uh, the distance either measured from the um, from the bottom of the container or uh, in other words it can be measured at the top of the container. <clears throat> so, what we are trying to get at is the following that we uh, should we have considered here the fluid pressure and pressure due to uh, or rather the uh, this is the uh, force due to the fluid pressure and this is the the force due to gravity, but there could be uh, an additional pressure that is that could be acting which is usually the atmospheric pressure. Let us see that how we actually get this atmospheric pressure. So, I hope this part of the discussion is clear. So, now we go ahead and calculate p as a function of y by solving this differential equation which means that we are going to integrate this equation in order to get p as a function of y. So, that is obtained. Uh, so, a d p integrated from a p 1 to p 2 these values of p 1 and p 2 are really arbitrary uh, which can be uh, fixed according to the given problem. And now, I am going to write this as minus rho g uh, d y uh, and integrated from y 1 to y 2. So, there are two points y 1 and y 2 which are say arbitrary. y 1 is the distance of this point say point A from the bottom of the container, y 2 is the uh, distance of the point B from the again from the bottom of the container where respectively the pressures are P 1 here at A and P 2 here at B. So, we have to solve this equation this is fairly easy to solve we simply integrate it um, and we continue writing with a minus sign and so P 2 minus P 1 equal to minus rho g y 2 minus y 1. You must have noticed that uh, here we have taken rho and g to be constants um, and that is why they are taken out of the integral. However, as we told that either for uh, gases or for, uh, uh, for <coughs> uh, liquids um, in a huge water mass such as an ocean. Uh, you may not have rho to be constant, rho could be a function of y and that functional dependent needs to be known in order to put it into this equation and integrate. Suppose rho is a linear function of y, suppose in some problem rho is equal to alpha y, in which case we should not put rho to be uh, a constant and take it out of the integral rather this alpha which is assumed to be a constant here which can be taken out of the integral and this will be an integration of y dy in which case it will not be y 2 minus y 1, but it will be y 2 square uh, uh, minus y 1 square divided by 2. In any case, we are not specifying the functional dependence of rho uh, and it is taken to be a constant here and we can write this uh, equation. So, this is how the pressure difference between two points uh, which varies with the distance measured of the two points from the bottom of the containers to be like this. Now, let us assume that uh, that my y 2 is this entire uh, height of the water column measured from the bottom. 
in which case my P 2 becomes simply equal to P uh, 0 which is the atmospheric pressure. So, this is the pressure due to the atmosphere which is known as the atmospheric pressure. Uh, so, that is equal to uh, P 2 and my um, <coughs> Y 2 uh, for this particular case my Y 2 is equal to uh, <coughs> Uh, call it uh, 0 um, or rather let us call it as uh, H um, and uh, we can we can get um, or uh, if you if you call this as the total height of the uh, the water column and uh, now we can measure it from here and absorb the negative sign in which case we can write this instead of h we can write this as 0 that is we are now no longer measuring the uh, the distance from the bottom surface but we are measuring it from the top surface in which case uh, my y2 becomes equal to 0 and my y1 uh, let's say becomes equal to h and then my uh, p1 becomes equal to p that i want to calculate and y1 becomes equal to h so under these two condition i can put it in which case what i want to do is that i want to absorb this negative sign uh, and call y2 to be equal to 0 because now no longer i am measuring it from the bottom surface i am measuring it from the top surface and now my p2 minus uh, p1 which becomes equal to my p0 <coughs> minus uh, p and my uh, the right hand side which is minus rho g y2 minus y1 now becomes equal to uh, rho g h uh, and my pressure becomes equal to p0 plus rho g h. So, this is the final result that we wanted to obtain which says that the pressure uh, at any given point which is at a depth h measured from the uh, top surface of the of the liquid uh, the pressure at a height h at a depth h inside the liquid is equal to the atmospheric pressure plus uh, the rho times g times h and uh, so that is the expression for pressure that we wanted to uh, calculate. So, this part is due to the atmospheric pressure and this part is due to the fluid. Having looked at the expression for uh, pressure uh, which is uh, given as uh, P equal to uh, P 0 plus rho g h uh, this being the atmospheric pressure as we have discussed and this is the pressure due to the liquid column of height h. Uh, we uh, now want to uh, do some problems uh, using this formula that is uh, pressure due to uh, liquids uh, which is given by this. So, let us uh, do a problem uh, which says that the surface of water water in a storage tank
is is a uh, 20 meter above the water tap in the kitchen of a house. So, this is understandable that uh, there is a storage over its storage uh, water storage tank which is uh, there on the terrace um, and the distance where the kitchen is or the kitchen tap is uh, the storage tank is located 20 meters above the kitchen tap. So, the question is uh, calculate the pressure at the tap tap and of course given that uh, density of water <coughs> equal to 1 into 10 cube kg per meter cube. Uh, this density is uh, denoted by uh, a quantity called as rho which almost looks like p, but please do not uh, 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 distinguish this from p it is called rho r h o. So, this is equal to rho of water. So, now um, the pressure at the surface of the tank that is uh, at the surface of water inside the tank. Um, so, there is atmospheric pressure and the same atmospheric pressure also is there at when the water is issuing out from the tap. So, the essentially the pressure difference is simply given by. Um, so, delta p is the pressure difference which is simply given by rho g into h where rho is of uh, that of water. Uh, so, this is equal to <coughs> 1 into 10 cube kg per meter cube uh, g is 9.8 meter per second square and h here is 20 meters. If you do this, it becomes 1.96 into 10 to the power 5 Newton per meter square, which is also called as 1.96 into 10 to the power 5 Pascals. So, this is the uh, pressure difference that is there at the uh, between the surface of the uh, water level uh, inside the tank to the tap, um, the nozzle of the tap from which water issues out. Uh, so, this is a simple uh, plug in type of uh, example, let us do another one. Again a plug in type, however, uh, it is related to human body again. So, what is the uh, difference in blood pressure between the top of the head and the bottom of the feet of a 1.60 meter tall person is 
standing vertically. Uh, so, so there is a person who is uh, 1.60 meters tall and uh, you are needed to find the, uh, the pressure, the blood pressure, uh, the difference in the blood pressure between the top of his head from the bottom of his feet. Um, and uh, the person is assumably standing vertically. Uh, now, the, uh, the input that needs to be given in this case is the density of blood and uh, uh, just keep in mind that this density of blood that I am going to give you uh, is actually the uh, average density of blood because the uh, blood consists of the blood plasma which has a little less density as compared to the other cells that uh, uh, make up for the blood which has a little more density. So, this is the average density of blood which is uh, 1060 kg per meter cube. Just take a note that uh, this value for water is 1000 kg per meter cube. So, uh, blood is a uh, little more dense than water. So, again uh, the pressure difference is given by uh, delta P it is equal to rho G H uh, rho for blood is given as 1060 kg per meter cube with a G to be 9.8 8 meter per second square multiplied by 1.60 meter and this comes out as uh, 1.6620.8 Newton per meter square. Okay, so, uh, this is the, uh, the blood pressure difference uh, between the top of his head to the bottom of his feet. Um, so, let us do another problem. And the problem uh, concerns um, which all of you might have felt at uh, times that you have uh, either um, traveled up uh, in a through a hill and or um, travel down very quickly uh, descended from a hill very quickly or it might have happened when you have traveled in an airplane. Um, inside the airplane uh, the pressure is um, pretty much taken care of, but still uh, one feels uncomfortable at times because there is a pressure build up uh, in the ears. Um, and what happens is that uh, there is a pop in the year which means that uh, some air is released to equalize the pressure between the inner part of the eardrum to the outer part of the eardrum. And uh, this uh, as I told you that this can also happen if you are climbing a hill or you are getting down from a hill very quickly and uh, this uh, can cause uh, this uh, popping of the air as it says. Um, <coughs> so, if it does not pop then there is a uh, pressure that builds up or rather there is a force that is developed and that is why the ear starts aching. So, the question is um, uh, what is the, so, so when you not what is, when you uh, run up a tall hill or run down the hill quickly, the ears pop 
and as I told pop means that some air is released from the ears um, and uh, this is due to the build up of the pressure uh, due to that uh, that the body takes a little while to get accustomed to uh, suppose you are climbing down a hill very quickly or you are running down a hill very quickly. So, the pressure difference that you initially had and after you have gotten down uh, quite a few uh, say 1000 feet quickly. So, then uh, this pressure build up can happen. Uh, the question is suppose this did not happen did not happen what would be the force force on the eardrum eardrum of area 0 0.5 centimeter square uh, if a change in altitude which means height altitude or you can just simply write it as height um, of 1000 meter takes place. So, if there is a, a height difference of 1000 meter that takes place and if the ears do not pop, uh, so what is the pressure developed and uh, because of that pressure developed what is the force that is exerted on the eardrum. So, again P equal to uh, the pressure is equal to H rho and G. Uh, now, it is has to be given that the rho of air that is the density of air it is 1.29 kg per meter cube. So, 1000 meter uh, multiplied by 1.29 uh, kg per meter cube uh, multiplied by 9.8 meters per second square and this thing when you calculate it, it comes out to be 12642 Newton per meter square. Uh, so, this is the pressure that is developed between the inner part and the outer part of the eardrum because of this pressure there is going to be a force which is equal to the pressure multiplied by the area which is 12642 Newton per meter square and you multiply it by 0 0.5 into 10 to the power minus 4 meter square. Uh, so, the meter square will cancel and this becomes equal to 6.32 Newton. So, uh, this 6.32 Newton uh, is, uh, is a force that is exerted on the ear. Uh, now, you can take this as uh, suppose just for the argument's sake or making matters simple, let us take g equal to 10 for now and which means that there is a weight of 0 0.6 kg that is exerted on the uh, on the ears and uh, um, this is uh, most of the times this is not uh, an unbearable uh, situation, but however, uh, uh, you would find actually uh, children crying inside the airplane and the reason uh, more often than not is going to be because of this pressure that develops and um, that uh, creates uh, an ache uh, in the and the child uh, cries. So, uh, we have looked at mainly uh, so far 
the density of liquids uh, we have defined density and we have also looked at uh, density of solids liquids and gases and we saw that the density of gases is uh, at least something like three orders of magnitude less than that of uh, the other uh, solids and liquids. And uh, we have also learned about specific gravity uh, and also we looked at uh, the pressure that is exerted by a liquid column of height h or the pressure that is felt at a point uh, inside the liquid at a depth h from the surface um, and used that result to compute some simple problems so far.